Hi, my name is Richard Mitchell, and I'm with the Sanford School of Public Policy at Duke University. Today, I'm going to give a brief overview of Crestron's .av framework and how it might be deployed in an academic environment, specifically for small huddle rooms, meeting spaces, and teaching environments. Crestron says, no programming simplicity with the power of Crestron. Now you can deploy powerful presentation systems without any programming. I translate that to mean, it's a way for Crestron to sell more hardware to gain market share by offering a turnkey out-of-the-box AV solution. Now here's my analogy for what .AV framework is. Imagine you're deploying a mobile phone solution at the enterprise, and you go to Apple and they offer you the iPhone hardware along with the iOS operating system, but they don't include any applications with it. In fact, you have to go to a third party a developer just to get a phone application, a text messaging application, a calendar, and uh, contacts. That really wouldn't be a great solution for a phone, so obviously Apple includes a number of applications with the device. Now, looking at Crestron, historically they've always sold uh, great uh, hardware for AV solutions and the operating systems included with that but they've never offered applications until .av framework, which sits right on top of the operating system. So why is this significant? Looking at a small room, and this is the example we'll be using, uh, we have a screen, we have a control system and a routing solution, also a touch panel. Now we don't know exactly where the TV is going to be located or what inputs uh, will be used with this device or how close they'll be to the uh, to the unit. Before AV Framework, from the perspective of a school, uh, they would get some kind of a request for additional AV in a space, and then they would go to an AV installer and kind of communicate what the need is. From there, a scope of work would be created. Uh, again, some of these steps may take multiple days and multiple rounds of communication, but eventually a quote would be created. The project would be approved. From there, the hardware is installed, and then the uh, software is either programmed or uh, taken from an existing code and modified slightly. And then we go to the commissioning of the system once everything is in place. These systems, even the small one uh, that we're talking about, could cost $20,000 and take four plus weeks to deploy. After AV Framework, the school has more control over how these systems are deployed. Essentially, they can come up with the scope of work and generally quote how much uh, this space would cost. Again, the space would have to conform to what .AV Framework is able to accommodate. So if you had a space with a number of customized uh, requirements, .AV Framework wouldn't be a solution for you, but let's say in this case where we have a relatively simple room, uh, it, it, it does fit within that. We could go to the AV installer and say, you know, this is what we're interested in deploying. They could either deploy that hardware or simply hand over the hardware to a, a mid-level AV technician to install. And because the software is already running, .AV Framework's already running on the hardware, no software needs to be installed. The school simply configures the hardware the way that they prefer, and the system is commissioned. So this room now costs about $12,000 and took about two weeks to deploy. Now, $8,000 in a couple of weeks is uh, will probably get you a nice pat on the back as an AV technician, but it's not significant until you start looking at multiple rooms where you might save up to $84,000. Well, actually, uh, it's $96,000 if you were deploying over 12 rooms, but I have two key points that will make this math make a little bit more sense. By doing an AV framework room, the rooms are now AV tech serviceable, which means the AV tech that installed this system now has a pretty robust understanding of how it works and would be able to service an issue that would maybe crop up over time. For example, the touch panel failing or the DMPS unit failing. They'd be able to see that and be able to directly service it. Also, this could provide funds to purchase backup or test equipment. And that's where that missing $12,000. In this scenario, we actually have a 13th room that is sitting in the wings in case something fails in one of those spaces. For example, if a touch panel failed, you'd simply get the replacement, place it in the room, 
program it and 20 minutes later the room is back up or even if the DMPS unit failed an hour later and the room is back up. So that's a significant savings and it empowers the AV technicians to have more control over the spaces. So AV Framework works with a number of DMPS units, six of them to be exact. The one that we'll be talking about today is the DMPS3 4K 150C. It's the piece of test equipment that we're using. .AV Framework works with a number of user interfaces, uh, the seven and 10 inch touch panels from Crestron, also Crestron's 10 button controller, and you can control the system using a computer in X panel. Other devices, the air media from Crestron, occupancy sensors, a number of endpoints, receivers and transmitters, and uh, currently it works with a number of manufacturers of TVs and Blu-ray players. So uh, the DMPS, let's go over kind of the connections in the back so uh, that you have an understanding of the heart of the uh, AV system. In the bottom left hand corner you have four VGA inputs, uh, four HDMI inputs, two DM inputs, which means we can run devices from roughly 100 meters away to this device. We have one output, but it's output over the HDMI and DM. Uh, there's also a LAN connection in USB. The receiver that we're using is the DM RMC 4K 100C, and this is used when you're going a long distance uh, you'll plug the DM into this device and HDMI will go out to the uh, TV screen. Uh, you have the DM in and the HDMI out. Uh, looking at the transmitter, and this is something we'd probably mount under a table, it has a DM out, so this would be sent to the control system, and it has a HDMI in, so this is where you'd plug in your laptop. So let's look at this. We're, this is a, a sample room that we're quickly going to kind of envision how we're going to deploy our AV system. We know that we have an, a high definition screen. We're going to place this in the front of the room. Uh, we're also going to add a local computer to the credenza in the back, a place so that we can add a laptop with HDMI, also a legacy VGA connection. Also we want to add an HDMI connection to the table. So that's great, but what does this really look like in terms of the hardware and how we would deploy it? So let's go ahead and add our, the heart of our system, the DMPS3 4K 150C to this room. Uh, we're gonna wanna connect that to our local AV network. So we're going to add a small Netgear switch. I add a note that this is one way of deploying it. Many enterprise environments will have a large switch or multiple uh, Ethernet jack. So this may not be the best way to deploy it, but for our example, this is how we're going to, to show uh, the AV network. We're also going to connect that to our enterprise network. And from there, we're adding our touch interface. Uh, the reason we're using this Netgear switch is it offers power over Ethernet so that our touch interface is both controlled and powered over one Ethernet cable. Let's go ahead and add our display. Our display is further away than HDMI supports, so we're going to run a long DM cable to a receiver, the DM RMC 4K 150C, which will convert that sing signal into an HDMI connection for our display. Let's go ahead and add a local computer. This is a computer that will always live in the room and sit on top of the credenza. Let's add an HDMI uh, laptop input for guests and a legacy VGA at the same location. Also, let's add a, a tabletop HDMI input. Uh, in many situations, a long HDMI cable won't work here either, so we're again running a DM cable. And we're going to add a transmitter to the underside of the table, and from there, add an HDMI cable to the laptop that would sit in that space. So let's go even into a little more detail to where these would connect to the DMPS3 4K 150C. Let's go back and again add our Netgear uh, switch to this configuration. Uh, we're connecting to the enterprise network. Uh, we're adding our touch panel. We're adding our display, so we're connecting DM to the receiver and the receiver to the uh, display. 
Let's go ahead and add our local computer that is always in the room in the credenza uh, and a HDMI and a VGA laptop inputs. And now let's add our DM cable that will go to a transmitter that is underneath the table where we can connect an additional laptop. So this is actually the physical, you know, places within the DMPS 3D4K uh, that you would plug these uh, items into. So there you have it. We've gone over all of the hardware associated with deploying a small Crestron.AV framework room. And in the next series, we're going to go into some of the software configuration and how to name new devices and get the system up and running. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add them below and we'll try to address them as uh, quickly as possible. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.